everybody, Jeff, the Executive Gardener here. Hey, this is a quick episode that I hope you'll enjoy. Anyway, it's about cross hand pollinating uh, cucumber plants. So, uh, I get a lot of questions about uh, my cucumber plants and how can you tell what's the male flower versus the female flower. And the other question I get is if you don't have a lot of bees or uh, butterflies, which for some reason in Houston this season, we don't have a lot of bees. Bees tend to obviously land on the male flower, then go to the female flower, thus cross-pollinating it. Well, I haven't seen many honeybees this year in Houston for whatever reason. Maybe it's all the rain that we've had. And if you've watched the news the past two weeks, we've had record rain. It hasn't been like this in 30 years in Houston. And uh, maybe that's affecting the bees, but there are none. Without the ab with, with the absence of bees and butterflies, um, certain vegetable plants like uh, cucumbers, watermelon, squash, zucchini, watermelon, which is a fruit, and cantaloupe uh, will not get cross-pollinated. So the male will not pollinate the female flower without pollinators such as bees and butterflies. It's a big issue. So uh, there is something you can do about it to enhance your harvest from, in this example, a cucumber plant. So I'm going to show you how to identify the male flower with the stamen and the female flower with the stigma and use a simple paintbrush to cross-pollinate these. And I'll show you uh, the example of what I've done so far with my cucumbers and the yield that's had. So if you watched a video, probably two or three videos ago, talked about starting a pickling cucumber garden. This is the garden in two big pots so far. So I'll show you what it looks like. And also I'll show you what you need to do to cross-pollinate and to enhance your yield with the absence of a lot of bees and other, other pollinators for your garden. So let me grab the camera and show you how it's done. So here's my uh, pickling cucumber garden. You see it's growing fairly well. It's in two 25 gallon tubs. And I have them vining out here on the concrete. The important part, like I talked in my last video, is that you not let uh, the leaves get too much contact with the soil. But I'm surprised there's not more mildew and mold, uh, mildew on this because we've had 30 inches of rain the past probably month. So anyway, it's doing fairly well, but let's get up close the purpose of this episode. So you'll take a look. This is a female flower, okay? That's a female um, uh, cucumber. And you'll see the flower at the end. And the way you can tell, and I'll use my paint brush to point, is that uh, even in zucchini, squash, watermelon, you'll see a mini vegetable or a mini cucumber. Um, golly, a mini vegetable or a mini cucumber here. Um, uh, underneath the flower. So that's how you can tell it's the female flower. So that's the female flower. Uh, I'll show you in a second. That's a small little cucumber as I talked about. And then over here, if you'll take a look where I'm pointing, this is the male flower right here. So there's no fruit underneath it, as you'll see. Uh, there's another female flower there with a the fruit underneath it. So in general, when you look at zucchini, squash, watermelon, um, cucumber plants, there's probably, typically, unless it's a special variety vine, it's typically, probably, there's probably uh, 10 times more, maybe 12 times more male flowers than there are female flowers. So what you need to do is real simple. So let me get a close up here and I'll show you what you do. So if you look at the male flower, inside the male flower, there's a stamen. Then you'll see it sticking up there, okay? And I'll keep this pretty uh, G-rated. You simply take the paintbrush, and you stick it into there and you swirl it around to get the necessary uh, pollen off there. And then you simply identify one of the female flowers. So in this case, uh, we're going to use this one. Let me get this leaf out of the way. Uh, and you simply stick the paintbrush again into the flower as such and swirl it around on the stigma and you've just transferred the pollen to there necessary from the male to the female flower to boost your um, your uh, harvest, your germination of your, uh, not your germination, but your harvest. You've pollinated, hopefully, uh, that stigma from the stamen of the male flower and thus we will have cucumbers. So it's worked fairly well. You're in the middle of the day here and I can tell you typically there's bees all over this. As you can see this plant there's flowers everywhere, and there's simply, I mean, look at them all. There's no bees here. So what I've had to do is do a lot of hand pollination myself, and um, 
Anyway, it's starting to bear some, some fruit. Sometimes when you do it, it doesn't work every time, but if you'll take a look under here, I'll show you. Um, so here, take a look here, there's a, uh, it has worked, so you'll see there's a cu cucumber right there. Um, and then underneath here, you'll see there's a few cucumbers that uh, are, are in fact growing. So it is working, and I would say in general, I typically do this even when I don't, um, Excuse me. I don't have. Uh, um, even if I do have bees, I typically do a lot of uh, hand pollinating because uh, it seems to give you a greater yield, greater harvest. And as you know, I make a lot of dill pickles, and I need a lot of tiny baby pickles to um, to grow this. In addition to this, I'll also give you a tip, and you'll see in there. There's also another cucumber growing. Once these start growing, I'll, I'll tell you, you gotta you gotta keep up with them because the cucumbers can get real big. Pickling cucumbers are meant to be small, they're sweet, less seeds, and uh, they're yummy as you know, whether you do bread and butter, butter pickles or dill pickles, but you don't want them to get too big, and once they start growing, they grow real quick, so keep an eye on it. Now what I do here is I put steeped compost in here probably once a week, and it really gets the nutrients. As I've talked about before, cucumber plants, just like zucchini and squash, do require a lot of nitrogen, so it keeps uh, a good amount of nitrogen in keeping the plant healthy. But overall. Uh, relatively healthy and uh, I'm very happy so hope you've enjoyed uh, that quick episode of uh, cross-pollinating uh, your fruits or vegetables this can be done again um, uh, whether you your uh, zucchini squash watermelon cantaloupe cucumbers and there's a few other vegetable and fruit plants that do require this if you have less pollinators so hope you've enjoyed this quick episode from the executive gardener channel Please uh, give it a thumbs up if you have. Also, uh, pass it on to a friend. I appreciate you watching the Executive Gardener channel here on YouTube. Thank you.